Gucci, some nipple, some yeah. Gucci, nipple, some yeah. Gucci. Yeah. Gucci. My nipples got hard. Should we bring it? Gucci. No. <laughs> nipple, Sorry. Some yeah. Gucci. I licked the butt and everybody threw Gucci. up. I'm just a crazy bitch. Gucci. This feels like some nipple. Have you ever wanted to see Big Ed eating the booty? But he gotta eat the booty like groceries. Well, me neither, but that didn't stop TLC from showing it to us, so now I'm gonna show it to you. Take a look at Big Ed eating that booty. This is butter. Okay, this is yeah. butter. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. Ah! Okay. Oh, okay. 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 All the way in. Yep, no, it was so bad that people started throwing up. I licked the butt. And everybody threw up. That is precisely what happened on the latest episode of 90 Day Fiance, The Last Resort, or whatever the hell it's called at this point. All I know is that I just saw Big Ed proverbially eating a booty and everyone genuinely threw up. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. It is the finale, I think, of the series. And the finale comes in two parts. And I will let you know why I think it's the finale by the end because there is a proposal of sorts and it says on the next part or on the final part and I think that we don't have any more so this is part one of a two-part finale I could be wrong but then again I've just had my head absolutely bleached from trying not to remember Big Ed eating that booty the show is the gift that keeps on taking every time I watch it the bar gets lowered for things that I don't want to see and as usual, the couple that I'm focusing on, Big Ed and Liz, go through two stages, either horny or fighting. There is no in-between because they're not a balanced couple. The only way they could be balanced is if he was on one side and a ton of rocks were on the other. But my gosh, do they do some things that you don't want to see. This is what happens when you've been on TV so long that it starts to get gimmicky and you don't actually know what to do. So you just do some really gross stuff. And we're, we're at that stage of the relationship where we've seen so much of Big Ed, the only thing that genuinely grosses us out is him doing some, like, perverse things. So have a seat, take a look. Please, if you, by the end of the video, like it, subscribe. I'm almost at 600,000 subscribers, and I can use all the money from the ads to go to therapy to try and erase my head from what I just saw. If you'd also like to follow me on 16leo underscore, that way you can tell me ideas for a new series, one that maybe doesn't involve as much booty eating as this. Sometimes I need a break watching 90 Day Fiance. That's why I leave the country, but when I leave the country, I need a VPN to help me. That's where Surfshark VPN comes right in. Surfshark VPN offers you protection while handling your online business. It allows you to change your virtual location, which has many benefits like accessing websites that might be blocked in certain countries, and it protects your data by encrypting it, among many other great features. For anyone who isn't too tech savvy, Surfshark is so easy to use. Once you download it, you just launch where you want to use it, select what country you want your virtual location to be, and click connect. That's literally it. If you follow me, you know that I tend to travel quite a fair bit, so Surfshark allows me to keep up with my TV shows no matter what time zone I'm in. It's also great that one subscription works on an unlimited amount of devices. It's also great having the freedom of working from a restaurant, coffee shop, or wherever this is for example, and knowing my connection is secure for things like work or online banking. Public Wi-Fi seems to be the most common place for people to get hacked or breached, so you gotta stay safe. And here's a bonus tip. Did you know that oftentimes you can get great deals Deals on things like shopping or flights just by changing your virtual location? Try it out for yourself. Get an exclusive Surfshark deal. Enter promo code 16LEO for an extra three months free at Surfshark deal slash 16LEO. All right, let's take a look. If you haven't caught up with the series, there's not much to watch. I mean, you could watch my videos or anyone else who's doing this on the series, but basically Big Ed is the big bull and he's dating this girl called Liz and they constantly go through this up and down cycle where he either likes her or hates her or she likes him or hates him they're not able to communicate so now they're on a show called the last resort and uh, it's supposed to be a pun but it's not it's just disgusting and basically they fight or they f those are the two things fight or f I'm normally in like a happy mood, but I'm kind of tired today because I'm supposed to be enjoying the last few days of my vacation. But here I am talking about biggest of Eds and I, I'm not happy. So I'm going to roast him a little bit. Also, I just, I love that opening shot. The fact that they needed an aerial thing to capture his body. So, so it's night 
608. Ooh. My nipples got hard. <laughs> My nipples got hard. Okay. So I, I mean, I'm assuming by all sorts of resorts, if you're staying there for like 10 days, by the fourth day, you're just so inebriated that everything is just making you horny. Liz said her nipples got hard from, from a bottle popping. I don't, I don't know if that's a flex or a... I don't know what that is. I'm excited. I haven't had like any girl time or like one-on-one -on -one with anybody. Is Angela coming? I asked her to come. So the girls are having a classic girls night and Liz is annoyed or worried that Angela, the person who screamed in her face like a referee the other day, is going to come and there might be some beef between the two. Don't walk away now. I'm not Ed. Do not. I'm being very calm. Listen. Hello? There's a little reminder in case you forgot that one of them is crazy and the other one didn't do anything. But Angela is back in town with her chopper-like <laughs> teeth that always scare me. I brought drink! Vodka and orange juice. Who wants it? Okay, so that's awkward. She brought one drink, took she's double-fisted, and then gave one to the fattest one. So that's, that's awkward. Uh, anyway, uh, the beef needs to be squashed and it's going to get done. I will say that altercation has really helped Ed and I realizing how much that I don't have his back. Wow, okay, that's probably not the thing that I expected today. Uh, Liz is somehow like, she's like, thank you, Angela, for calling me an orange bitch. It really helped show that Ed and I don't have a good relationship and also I don't have his back at all. So call me an orange bitch more often. I like it. Even add Oompa Loompa there from time to time. That'll be fun. I didn't think she was going to thank Angela for that. And I'm happy it didn't get worse than what it was. And thank I know you. you mean well. I do. I mean well, man. Sorry, bitch. <laughs> yep. And Angela apologizes in the only way she knows how to. Sorry, bitch. <laughs> she should be the villain in every 80s movie ever. Like, and nobody should give her a script. She's like Gary Busey with a wig, honestly. Just very unhinged woman who you don't like you want to invite her but not to your party like if it's your friend's party you want to invite her and then see all the havoc she causes because that's what she does i feel bad because liz is a good person and i'm just a crazy bitch <laughs> she, she just knows she's like i'm crazy I'm, I'm crazy i'm insane i'm psycho i'm psycho it's just what i do I got them big teeth, I'm gonna bite you. <laughs> That's just her personality. Like, she knows that she is unable to do things normally, but yet still, like, operates in the world as if she's, like, normal until someone says sorry, then she's like, I'm a crazy bitch. Sorry about that. Did you me my do thing? God damn. I wonder how her and that dude, Michael, actually get along. I don't know anything about their relationship, but every time I see her, there's just too much. I've seen her flash Big Ed, scream at Liz, and now call herself a crazy bitch. Before I came here, I packed an entire suitcase with a whole bunch of fabulous from my store. I own a lingerie store. So then Molly, the other one, she owns a lingerie store, and she's like, yo, girls night out, let's try on some lingerie, which, in theory, Sounds like the greatest fantasy I've ever heard in my life. But then when you look at the people who's actually trying it on, this is like the worst nightmare that I've ever had. So, yeah. But it's a girls' night out. Woo! Who was coming here to the resort? I brought something for everybody's body in all different sizes. Meanwhile, the guys on the last episode were trying to go to a strip club. And this is a continuation of the last episode. So they just pick up and they're uh, discussing how they're going to go to the strip club. But the guy Jovi, apparently, he really likes strip clubs. Like he, is, he like belongs in a strip club. No, I don't mean dancing on the poles. In fact, he, he knows so much about strip clubs. He has strippers on call. That's gangster. So I know a couple of strippers that worked in Key West. They used to work in New Orleans, but I just don't want to get anybody in trouble. You can get yourself in trouble by knowing the locations of where strippers used to be. You're like Sherlock Holmes for strippers. This is, this is not a good thing. Whenever a guy can tell you the address of where a stripper used to live and now where they do live, you gotta check yourself, Jeremy. <laughs> That's really sus, man. I went to the strip club one night, oh, and we had been friends, you know? <laughs> I would just go there, hang out, and get drinks. She was like, let's go on a trip. 
So I booked the trip. He he makes it sound like he just went to like Cheers, the bar where everyone knows your name. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows his name, but it, only because he throws ones and puts his number on the end of it. I just went to the bar. I was just having some drinks. That's what a pub is for. Usually the people aren't topless, and if they are, it's all like 40 old men with titties bigger than women. Like, that's the strip club, bro. You didn't go there just for drinks, you went there to get grinded on, and you weren't just talking about travel, you were talking about places to go on vacation to smash. Just say it for what it is, Joby. To Jamaica, and I went to I went on a vacation with this girl to Jamaica Did before- you smash this girl? <laughs> this stripper went on vacation with a guy that she didn't really know, are you kidding me? If Joby didn't, I'd be almost disappointed, actually. Before my wife and I met. Okay. So then Jovi's like, yeah, I might have hit it, but like it was before my wife. And everyone seems to be fine with it. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Later on, I'm going to tell you why that's not cool. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like I swear he deserves a good night out. If Yara does find out, I mean, what can I do? He, this man is so addicted to strip clubs. He will find another man with a troubled relationship and be like, you know, you cheated. And I feel sorry for you. That's why I'm taking you to the one place where cheetahs recover, the strip club. And if my wife finds out, there's literally, my hands are tied. And I tied them when going to the strip club because I like that shit. I like that. In his head, it's like, this is the correct decision. It's the worst decision possible. But in his head, he's like, this is the good one. I'm going to message her and see what night she's working. I'm down. Okay, you have her phone number, do you? You married and you still have the phone number of a girl you went to Jamaica with and smashed who's a stripper who you know where she works. Okay, that is not <laughs> Oh, Jovi. Should we bring Ed? No. <laughs> they then ask, should we bring Ed? And uh, Kelly is like, no way, no way. And Jovi actually does like a pretty cool thing. He's like, yo, you know, even though we hate him, we should probably include him because that would be bad to not include him. And Kelly's like, no, he called me a bitch. So Kelly's still holding on to grudges from like last year because he's Brooklyn cop, but also grudge holder. Absolutely not. He called me a bitch. I don't want to exclude him just because. We this is like the most passive thing I think I've ever heard. He called me a bitch. I don't like him. I thought you were a Brooklyn cop. Why don't you regulate on this man? You can't be out here with the boys being like, do not invite him or I'm not coming. This is some passive aggressive stuff, Kelly. Rule number one, I do not want him naked on a stage. Rule number two, keep your mouth shut. Whatever happens yeah. there stays there. You think he's gonna get up on that pole, do you? Naked ladies and you think Big Ed's like, come on ladies, move aside. Let me see this ding dong. I'm gonna show you with some pride. Mm, mm, mm. You really think that's gonna happen, do you, Kelly? Kelly then proceeds to make fat jokes while he is probably equally as fat, which just mind boggles me. We all know he's shaped like a ball, so we just, instead of them picking him, trying to lift him up, I don't want to hurt my back. I'm going to roll him out of the club. Does it make you feel happy that you made like two fat jokes of a guy who's like as fat as you? Like, is this at least Big Ed calls you a bitch to your face? Like, I don't like it. It's stupid, and Big Ed's the worst. But like, at least he does it to your face. You doing it on camera behind his back, calling him fat when you're walking away from him and stuff is like, <sighs> at least if you call, if you tell him to his face, you're going to roll him out the club, it'll be somewhat more palatable. That's the only thing w when it comes to Kelly. I'm like, stop talking about like Brooklyn cop and all this like, yeah, man, if you come around my neighborhood, I'm a P -p -p -p. and then as soon as he calls him a bitch, he's like, I don't like that. I'm going to roll you. Are we going to the stripper? Go. No, 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 no stripper tonight. No, not yet. Not tonight. It's gonna be fun. So then the boys go home, and uh, since they said the word stripper to Azuelu, like a two year old kid, he starts repeating it and constantly waits to go to the strip club. He's like a kid who's promised candy. He cannot wait. He's just waiting for the stripper. And Candy is the stripper's name, by the way. Florida, baby. We're gonna do some stripper tonight, baby. We're gonna see some nipple, some yeah. Gucci. We're gonna see some nipple, some Gucci. <laughs> He's got like a very mel melodic voice. We're gonna see a stripper. It's gonna be fun. Hey, driver, can you drop us to the stripper, please? please? Uh, no, I swear, no. that's not tonight. Can you drop us in a stripper? Can you put a stripper in us? Can I, can I come out of a cake and then get some cake in my face for stripper? Can I get stripper 
Is that the name of the uh, street bar? Come here, street bar. He's the most Samoan person I think I've ever seen. Like, I've never seen someone wear a hat like <laughs> Samoa. Where I'm from? Samoa. Street bar. I want to see a stripper. I messaged the stripper to find out, you know, where she's working. The past is the past. I'm just, it's a friendly uh, encounter that I'm trying to make happen, so. Ooh, yo, I don't, does your wife know about this? That you have your stripper on your phone? Is, is it on speed dial? That's the thing. If Joby dials three, is Jasmine, does she pick up immediately? I just, I mean, I don't know, man. You went to Jamaica with her. I, whew, wake and bake. Now you got her number on your phone. That's. That's, that's, man, Can I mean, reverse the situation. If she had some dudes on a phone that she used to go on vacation with, if you know what I mean. I don't know, Jovi. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's that's wild, man. Uh, hopefully, Yara won't be jealous. I have <laughs> all up in a sweat uh, with his face. Uh, uh, I know he loves They didn't practice air motorboating. That's exactly how you do it. <laughs> you have to make the sound, otherwise the boat isn't moving, obviously. <laughs> How do you do the thinking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I like that. I like that. So yes, the boys' night out to alleviate their stress is to go to a strip club. The girls' night out is to try and lingerie. Like I said, everyone drinks a little bit much, gets a bit horny, things are going crazy. I'll be back. Woo! Now the girls are trying on the lingerie and, uh, you know, we're subjected to see it. Good for them, you know. I would say the body positivity thing is good. The fact that they're enjoying themselves and uh, at least building their confidence up. <sighs> Marginally better than going to a strip club, I believe, honestly. I don't know how this is going to cut we don't fat, have a fat cat. <laughs> but we got options. So you can do this. You have a fat cat club. Never mind. I take everything back because the girls are now going to explain to me what a fat cat means. I thought a fat cat was Garfield, but it's not. Our, our uh, BJJs are fat, or you had the long, skinny lip. lip. <laughs> Michael loves my fat cat. You know why? It's perfect. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get it out of my head. I can't get it out of her. Michael loves my fat cat, because it's perfect. <laughs> you leave nothing to the imagination, and I wish you would leave everything to the imagination. Thank you for explaining what a fat cat means. Now I'm going to ask, oh, hey, do you have a fat cat? And the girl will be like, yes. Yes, I've got five. And I'll be so confused when she's actually talking about cats. <laughs> yep, so then Liz shows everyone her lingerie and she's feeling all sexy. I guess this is one of those, mo they should have put montage music over it. It would have been like, woo, girl power, woo. Angela gets in some lingerie, then motorboats her friend. <laughs> the guys were at least like, you know, doing it to imaginary people. These two actually do it. <laughs> oh, then she shows her ass. Oh, God. Can they have like a warning? Before they do this, I've seen entirely too much of this old grandma bomb here. Man, god damn it. What the hell? <laughs> oh! Ew! Ew! What the fuck? I'm sure she is a grandma, isn't she? She got grandkids and like, oh, hey, Mimo, what's on TV today? Oh, the last resort, that's you. And then they see her shaking her ass and motorboating other people, and they're like, Grandma. Oh. Boo. Hi, Ed. Have a seat. After that, uh, it's the next day. Everyone's meeting for an early breakfast. And this is the scene that I showed you at the start where uh, he makes everyone throw up. But it turns out Liz is not even there because she's so hungover from last night that she couldn't even make it to this. Amazing that the show is so much drinking that I don't think any contestants have been in all episodes. Like, there's always someone drunk, intoxicated, couldn't turn up, someone's fighting. This is the most dysfunctional group of people. Oh, doing? let's move, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. Hello, Ed. Where's Leas? So, Liz, um, thanks to you. Where's Leas? <laughs> Who? Leas. Where's Leas? How you spell it? L I ears, Lears. And then I honestly had to look like four times before I was like, who? Who the hell is Lears? She meant Liz. 
What did you do last night, Ed? Well, so I didn't get invited out with the guys, but I got hypnotized. <gasps> oh, yeah, I forgot that bullshit. He turned into a leprechaun in his past life. Lest we forget, this is the show that we're watching. This man literally got on a bed last episode and now thinks in his past life he was a leprechaun entertainer and everyone hated him. <sighs> the only thing worse than that is if Angela actually confirms this, which she does. He's talking about hypnosis, honey. Remember how I tell you I was an Italian in my past life? I got proof from Ed we have past lives. Because someone hypnotized him and called him a leprechaun? Does not, that's proof? And you were an, an Italian in your past life? That's in the whole session. They were like, you're Italian. Okay. All right, Angelo. I know in my past life that I was Italian. Let's go eat. Now we can go eat meatballs together. I, holy shit, I guess I'm Italian in a past life as well. Whenever I pray Mario Brothers, I feel closer to Italians than ever. I eat the bees, I win the race. Oh, I fuck your face, your bees are shit. That's, that's how she knows that she's Italian, because she swears a lot and uses her hands. That's her description of Italian culture. Swears a lot, uses hand, nothing else. Who who hypnotized you, a racist? <laughs> what the hell is that about? I've never felt like I fit in, but now I know why. It's yeah. amazing. Here's Liz. Oh, God. Okay, well, after he's, like, telling everyone his new leprechaun past spurt or whatever has made him a good, better man, he then puts on his spectacles to look at Liz in lingerie, which is the funniest shit I've ever seen. Showing how this man is so old, he has to put on spectacles as if he's looking at some bones or some other archaeology shit. Holy smokes! What is it? She looked good. Liz looks amazing. We freaked out. We were screaming. It was so. What are those glasses, my man? I have watched you for years. You've never taken those out. What a spectacle they are just to see them. I would be surprised if he like left on a monocle and then just went on one of those big unicycle bikes where one wheel is comically big. Angela said she's a part of the Fat Cat Club. Do you know what that means, Ed? It means you got a fat coochie. Well, I learned what a taint was two days ago. What's a taint? Uh, okay, so over breakfast, while everyone's eating, trying to enjoy things, keep it down, this conversation turns from somewhat wholesome into uh, do you know what a fat cat is? And then Big Ed's like, no, but I do know what taint is. And then they have a tainted conversation. It's like the space between your balls and your butthole on a man. Oh, Michael, let me lick his butt. He won't. <laughs> she tried to lick my butt and I refused. God damn. I never thought I'd hear those men from Nigeria be like, oh, she tried to lick my butthole, but I don't like it. On, on oh, American television. Oh, my God. At least it's only airing in America, Michael. Gosh, people in Nigeria is going to be like, what are you doing? And now we're gonna have a conversation about who licked whose buttholes, and this is how we're getting to it. Okay, I wanna know this, everyone. We're going around the table. Oh, God. Have you licked or had it licked? No and no. But someone's begged me to lick my butt, and I declined. But thank you so much for the offer. I love you. That's the passion. Angela. The passion. When you stick your finger, I'm sorry, your tongue, not your finger, because that's, 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 you know, you won't feel the crust of someone else's ass flakes. That's what, I want. That's what I want in the morning. Uh, do I want Kellogg's corn flakes? No. But I'll take my wife's ass flakes. <laughs> I never licked a butt. He won't let me. But I've had mine licked. Oh, what does it feel like? Gross. I have tossed salad. Damn it. Michael, Michael was like, no, don't say it. Oh, no. She has done it. She has done it for me. She has sold me down the river. <laughs> Michael, he he explored the uh, forbidden tunnels, did he? Didn't know that about Michael. But you know what the funniest part of this is? Big Ed at the end saying, yeah, I've tossed salad. That is the colloquial word, by the way, for <laughs> eating ass. Like, he just threw it in there like, yeah, what, you guys eat butt cheeks? Yeah, I've tossed the salad many times. God, he said like the word like, yeah, 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 do it all the time. I love it. I love having it done to me. I'll toss your salad right now. I'll tell you what, I'm on a diet. Salad tossing only, babe. And I love having my salad tossed. Wow! Okay. It is, that's such it, a it's a little chalky, but it turns the girl on. That waiter, by the way, must have been like, oh, have a salad tossed. When I asked if you wanted salads today, I didn't mean that. 
Use the flower. Use the flower as so an example. So if this is, Dr. if this is, Liz's is but Okay, this is yeah. Oh. yeah. There it is. This is this is it. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> yep. Couldn't even get through it. Like just the thought of the man doing it is just. Green Aid talking about that. My stomach is still hung over from last night. Man, I just can't hold it. Then. Hey, I wouldn't blame you as well. I can't. I'm actually getting a bit queasy thinking of. Oh, yeah, you're right. This is horrible. Yeah, I guess the drinks didn't help, but my gosh. I threw up. Okay, that's good. You can't do that to me because I'm going to throw it. And then what happened is Angela has a gag reflex, and I think I do too, and everyone starts a chain reaction. And basically, Big Ed made everyone throw up. Everybody's throwing up. I'm sorry for calling you names. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got your apology before oh, even asking for it. Oh, no. But then it turns into a good thing, because after he makes one table throw up, he apologizes to another table by coming to Kelly without even asking and starts apologizing to him. I have angry stuff that I'm out. I'm going to get out. I'm sorry. And I'm going to be less talk over. All right. He's Ooh. doing everything. Talking about. He then also apologizes for being the center of attention and everyone's like, God damn, Big Edge, you've turned over a new leaf. At least you didn't stick your tongue in it like the last table. You know, I've learned through past life regression. When I get uncomfortable, I become the clown and I need to work on my behavior. You literally had to get hypnotherapy into believing you're a leprechaun to start apologizing to people. I guess if that's what it takes. But are you serious? You couldn't just do it? You had to, people had to pretend you're a f***ing leprechaun in your past life for you to even apologize for calling people bitches? I guess it's a win. I think we should go get changed and go to therapy, yeah? Let's do it. Welcome everybody. Hello, hello. hello. So after Big Ed has this realization, it is now time for the next therapy session. and. Voila, surprise, I guess. As usual, the three therapists that we started off with could not do the job, so they hired another therapist slash specialist to do her job. It's just like a therapy convention where they can all get 50 bucks for doing one hour of work. I don't get it. But today is Kama Sutra Day. Woo! She will be your Kama Sutra instructor for today. Oh, oh wow. Hello, hello. I'm honored to be here today. Yep, so they got Simone. I don't remember the last girl's name, but she was the one who stuck her finger in grapefruits and various other banana stuff. She's a sex educator. The three before her uh, therapists. At, at some point, there's a hypnotherapist. This is everyone on the island who is unemployed has a chance to try their bullshit out with these idiots. Kama Sutra is an ancient practice, and so I thought Kama Sutra would be- Is he pledging an allegiance to the- what nation is this? Be a great way for them to really experience the sensuality that we talked about. Beautiful. What I love about you, Michael- Oh, you know, wait, wait, wait. The worst part about this whole thing, that Angela has not come here with a partner. I keep saying this. They're at the end of their relationship. They're apparently in the worst shape. Or one of the war shape. I mean, that's why they're on 90 day, the last resort. And this dude didn't even show up. I mean, you know, I don't know. There might be some reason he didn't show up. But how are they going to fix their relationship when she's genuinely, and I couldn't show this, but she has a blow doll with a dick out? Is that really going to help your relationship? Calm me, which makes me feel loved from you. You're not in love with me. And I'm not in love with you. Meanwhile, uh, Kelly, the Brooklyn cop, and that other lady, Molly, I keep forgetting her name. I need to remember drug that I don't take. They are not in love with each other. And she says it. She's like, you're not in love with me and I'm not in love with you. And then he agrees, but it all unravels there and then. And he, he really feels the heartbreak. And he can't even stand to stay, so he leaves. Uh, I can't do this. I gotta go. Where are you going, Kelly? Meanwhile, Jovi is playing with his wife. This is like the worst look. He's just like with the feathers, like she's some sort of peacock. And then he looks up and he's like, oh, my friend's having a bad day. You know, he needs strip club. That's Jovi's answer to everything. Uh, so Kelly walks away. Everyone sort of concerned about him. And I'm concerned about the next scene, which is Big Ed and Liz doing central positions like I don't know what hell looks like, but I imagine this is pretty up there. 
Oh, 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 God. He looks like a pug that wants a fug. And maybe a sug later on. Oh, my. I'm just kidding. Are you, are you just kidding? Is that what you do during sex? You get in a position and you're like, oh, I'm just kidding. I wasn't fucking with you. I can't actually do that. Sorry. This is like two episodes after she said that he's really bad in bed. And now they're the complete opposite. And it's just like, how much of this relationship are we going to even have to see? Because it's either they're laughing and doing some scandalous shit together like they're teenagers, or they're hating on each other like they're teenagers. That's exactly where that type of relationship should stay. In school, when you're like past your 20s and stuff, you need to be able to communicate effectively. Otherwise, you just end up with a love-hate relationship, which is what they have. And yeah, in the notebook, it's very romantic. But in actual life, when they say cut, and then everyone looks at you like, was this a movie? It's not as fun. It cuts down on frustration. It cuts down on arguments. It helps build a strong foundation for lasting relationships. Oh my God. If you look at Liz's face, it looks like she is just having the worst time of my life. You know, like, I had the worst time of my life. And I never had a bowling ball inside me. Yes, it's true. And I'd bowl it back to you. Ah, that's not what I imagined. He looks like a lumberjack splitting wood. This is... He does, he's not even looking at her. He's looking into the horizon like this is a job opportunity. I wonder what else is out there for me. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's a stellar time for. Uh, oh yeah, I like that. This is crazy. Oh, look at her. Oh, he's wiping his nose. This is like trivial to him. Like, uh huh. And then what? Oh, okay. I can do that later. Uh huh. Oh, where is she? Oh, still. Oh yeah. How are you doing, Michael? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm okay. With that pillow, can you show me where Angela would be? On you? Ah, uh, yeah, there's a scene where Michael starts humping stuff too. Because this is, this is just a dirty resort, man. Everyone's doing some dirty stuff. And then he starts humping the pillow and everyone's back to the age of 13 where they're humping things. He even looks like a 13-year-old. What is that shirt, Michael? What is the singlet that you are wearing with palm tree? You look like a kid from California. Are you ah! like a baby? <laughs> yeah. Go, honey. Get it, honey. Get it. Yep, there he's playing her like a guitar. This is how Michael humps croissants and other various big, I guess, baked goods. Meanwhile, back to Big Ed and Liz, and he's now 69ing her. I cannot believe that I'm having to say these words, but... <laughs> Why are you guys 69ing? Because we're not shy. <laughs> That's more like a 53. He didn't, he didn't even get that far. How does that even work? And it, when he, it looks like a pile driver and he's the undertaker. It looks like it hurts. Big Ed could be a wrestler. He could be like the Big Show's smaller brother. It's like Big Show and Big Ed weighing at a combined weight off the scale does not go that high. Holy shit, it's the terrible twosome. And then Big Ed walks out and he can't even get in the ring because it's too big. <laughs> oh, oh my god, that looks like it actually, this looks like if you wanted to like do damage on someone, you summon Big Ed and then he like jumps on you and then you get flattened like in Looney Tunes. I know she's laughing, but I feel there's pain behind those blue eyes. This feels like some porn <laughs> If I think of everything I don't want to see in my whole life, Ed having sex is at the top of the list. Yeah, well, so is your boobies hanging out. We had to censor that too, I'm just saying. But yeah, yeah, I do agree with you. This is not really something I wanted to imagine. I mean, I thought he was bad in bed. Now Liz is looking like this man is the sex master himself. So I don't, I don't really know what is happening here. I don't get it, but I don't like it. And I'm very, 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 very... Two hours later. Very going to try and figure out a way to undo the things in my mind that I've seen. Again, this position looks like a 1930s poster of Ladies, if you try independence, this is what will happen. She looks like she's actually not going to recover from this. And I don't mean in the good way. Big Ed's like, yeah, man, I got her paralyzed. And he, in his head, he's like, yeah. But in her head, she's like, please get him away from me. I don't want this anymore. 
that weight distribution just is very, very tough for me. That bed must be taking a lot off the brunt. The class is Kama Sutra, not Porno Sutra. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, okay, okay. It's time to stop. It's time to stop, okay? No more. All right, this is much. This is much. Oswalu today kind of makes me feel a little uncomfortable. The main issue is that I haven't had sex with Oswalu since I found out that he cheated on me. I know this This scene is about um, Kay, Kay Lott. I don't know what her name is, Anasuelu. And she's talking about how she's not attracted to him after he cheated when she did the same thing after because he only said she could kiss another guy and then she him and then has feelings for him now. So I don't know, this whole situation is tough, but that's not why I kept the scene in. If you look at Big Ed, you can see the Kama Sutra instructor putting her hand on Big Ed as if he's trying to find the heart, or maybe even the heart of cards from Yu-Gi-Oh, or maybe even gold as a metal detector. The way that this man looks like he cannot find it, it's so funny. I'm not ready to trust him with that kind of intimacy yet. How are you feeling? Good? Horrible. Thank you. That was the worst experience of my life, personally, now that I had to see Big Ed and Liz do that. So shame on you and shame on that red one. If there was nobody else here, I would have made a porno. <laughs> That's, stop laughing like an evil maniac. That's not a good... <laughs> That's horrible. Their relationship is reliant on sex for them to even be happy. You haven't fixed their problem at all. I thought we were supposed to identify problems in relationships and figure out what the weak links were so they don't have to be on the last resort again. And if that's the case, sex is not the issue for them. It's everything else. Because even though Liz said he's bad in bed, she just did that to hurt him. She needs to be less emotional. He needs to be less demanding and more open. I mean, come on. I was very aroused, and I think she was too. There's a couple things that and I can probably teach the teacher. We've invented things. Dave, let's keep the blindfold. Yeah, they end the scene by saying keep the blindfold and also that they could teach the teacher a couple of things, which, uh, I mean, honestly, that's... Do you want me to clap for you guys? I don't know. I feel like you'd have to invent a couple positions with the height difference. And that's how the episode ends. But the most important part of this whole video is this section, because it says still to come. It doesn't say on the next episode, which implies to me two things. One, this is the final episode. And two, the final scene of this is Big Ed proposing. So let's watch it, try and debunk some of these things, unpack a little bit, and see what's on, I think, the second or third to last episode of this. I hope. Okay, so we've got some making up. Joby uh, kisses Big Ed probably because he said something good about a strip club. You have to come on this season of 90 Day, The Last Resort. Michael, watch. Uh, Angela puts Michael up her vagina. Nothing new there. That's just a normal scene. I don't... Liz, we have a question. Will you give Ed permission to come to the strip club with us tonight? I don't doubt. You think this is so yeah, uh, then they go to a strip club. Big Ed is now invited because Kelly left. So he's like the replacement strip club dude. And then they're at a strip club. And Azuelu, the person who went to Samoa and then cheated by just going to a party with his dad. He didn't cheat on his dad or with his dad, don't worry. He goes to a strip club. And guess what? The girls are kissing up on him. And maybe something's going to happen there. Not cheating. Oh my god. Do you think this relationship has run its course? We then have that same dude, Pentagrass, or whatever his name is, asking more trivial questions and getting to the bottom of absolutely nothing because he's useless. Oh. Every relationship has an expiration date. You should not have. And finally, we have Big Ed and Liz fighting. Fighting, fighting, fighting. They might as well be an evil rivalry on WWE at this point because the script writes itself. At least I had your bag and didn't have a problem trying to jump in to protect you. It made me look weak. I don't want to be leaving here with him. Right now, I don't want to be here leaving with him. I don't know if I can move to Arkansas with him. I don't think that we will be together if X, Y, and Z. If this happens, then I won't be blah, 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 blah. It's the same shit every single time. Every time. 
two things are going to happen, TLC. You're either going to have to make a big move for us to keep watching, or you're going to have to tell us the truth. Is this just a plan where you do the same shit every time? I can feel something just not right at all. I unblocked that guy. He decided to fly out. Oh, yeah, there's another scene in which Azuelu and that girl, the guy that she cheated with, is now flying out to meet her. And this adds another cog in the wheel, so everyone's got things happening for them. And last but not least... Just do obsessed with your stupid strippers all the time. You have a beautiful wife and you I'm dealing with this, it's too early. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, Jovi and strippers, wife not happy. That was, that was to be expected. I think everyone expected that. I'm talking about this. I want to ask you for the very last time. Oh, Will you marry me? So there's a cliffhanger and Big Ed gets down on one knee, which for him is a challenge. So that already shows how much he loves someone and he asks, will you marry me? I guess we're left wondering. So at the end of this video, we need to know, do you think Big Ed and Liz will get married? Please leave it in the comments below. I think, and he said in the video for the final time I'm asking this, I think whatever happens, they need to shut the hell up and stop filming these two because this has been too much of a ride for me i think there's an expiration date not just on relationships like molly said but on people watching them and this has gotten a bit stale hasn't it so just like bread i'm gonna throw it out if they don't make something new can't teach an old bread new holes all right <laughs> i'm out of here hey, I'm just, I'm